and welcome to another episode of Masala Chai and Chess with Nisha. Today is the birthday of the Princess of Indian Women Chess, Padmini Raut. Padmini is four times Indian National Women Champion, Asian Champion, Commonwealth Gold Medalist and has represented India in three chess Olympiads in the year 2014, 2016 and 2018. And in the year 2014, she won the gold medal for her performance on the reserve board in Chess Olympiad in Tromso. I have known Padmini since she was very young and in fact, very interestingly, she started playing chess in the year 2003 and that was the year that I became a woman grandmaster and she won her first age category nationals in 2005 and that was the year when I became the Indian national women champion. In fact, she was my roommate when she was really very young and I was really impressed by young Padmini. So, you know, her preparation was not like how other kids do revising openings and so on, but she would go through the games of Mikhail Tal every day. And her enthusiasm and love for chess really impressed me. And very interestingly, I gave in writing to her mother that one day she will become a grandmaster. Padmini impressed me very much as a young girl. And I must say that she has had a great journey so far. Padmini has been awarded with the Biju Patanayak Sports Award in the year 2007 and she won the Ekalavya Award for the year 2009. I hope she soon gets the Arjuna Award, an award she truly deserves. I am very happy to share that today is a very important day for Indian chess. It's not just the birthday of one national champion, but in fact, three national champions share their birthday today. Padmini shares her birthday with two other Indian stars, Grandmaster Lalit Babu and Grandmaster Murli Kartikeyan. It is very interesting to note that Murli became the Indian national champion in the year 2015 and 2016 and Lalit became the Indian national champion in the year 2017 and in all those years the Indian national woman champion was Padmini. Let's wish the Indian stars Lalit Babu, Murli Karthikian and Padmini a very happy birthday. May all their dreams come true. In fact, I was considering covering the games of all three of them in my video but then I realized that all these three players are very strong and it's very difficult for me to cover their games in 20 minutes in one video. It would not be easy for me and it would not be easy for my subscribers. So I decided that being a woman, I will only show the games of Padmini in this video and maybe in a later video, I can cover the other stars. Padmini is originally an attacking player and you all can understand that because as I mentioned earlier, she has been a fan of Mikhail Tal. But of late, she's trying to diversify her style. She's trying out, you know, different style of play. And she's playing an equal game, a long game without making any mistakes and trying to squeeze out wins from very simple positions, from very simple end games. So in this video, I decided not to show complete games, but to show you fragments of games and uh, to show you different aspects in chess about, uh, you know, some tactical element, some, uh, you know, one interesting move. So I'll just show you some fragments here and there from Padmini's games. Now, this is a position which was reached in World Junior Girls 2014 between Padmini and Gelip Iona. Gelip Iona is black, Padmini is white. And this was held in India in Pune. So this is 
opposition after black's 26th move black has played rook g7 in the last move and as you see black is attacking white's queen and white's knight both are under attack currently white is a piece up black has two pawns as compensation but uh, the kings are exposed both the kings are actually exposed very interesting to be a spectator for such a game it's very interesting to see whose king will prove to be more uh, exposed so this is already a masala chai moment for me if you are white here what would you do here as you see the queen on g6 is under attack what would you do about it in this position padmini played knight f6 a very nice move i'll come to it later but i need to first show what's wrong with the move queen f6 because some of you might have considered queen f6 so let's see for queen f6 there is this queen g3 check rook f2 and black has one good move here knight d7 it controls the f8 square and it attacks the queen so here the problem is that once the queen moves the h7 knight is hanging so there is this variation queen d8 check rook g8 queen e7 supporting the knight again rook g7 it's a draw with repetition so coming back to the position the starting position padmini played knight f6 i really liked this move and the tactical justification is that if rook into g6 here white takes h into g6 with a check and after king g7 there is this knight fork knight h5 this was nice and uh, after knight f6 if black plays queen e5 check we must consider all checks and captures so queen e5 check is important to consider because uh, as you see there's a check and there's an attack to the rook and the queen is attacked so this has to be considered here white has the move rook to e2 uh here if black captures the queen you can just take back with the check and you get the e5 queen for example if king g7 attacking the f3 knight you can play knight e8 check take the queen next move completely winning position for white so coming back to rook e2 position suppose black plays queen g3 check you have to clearly understand that in this position uh before i show queen g3 further the queen of black is under attack and white is also having threats of queen e8 or queen h6 leading to mate so suppose queen g3 check here white can take and white is a piece up in this position so this is completely winning for white so after knight f6 as you see white is threatening to play queen e8 so black defended black played bishop d7 padmini played rook f2 the opponent went queen c1 if you are queen e5 check she can go rook e2 so coming back to the position after rook f2 queen c1 she played rook c2 uh after queen f4 rook f2 queen c1 padmini repeated once and this is very typical of padmini i have seen her doing this in many a games she repeats once or twice and then changes probably you know this is quality of a uh, great player so she is also you know uh, has this in a style in her play so uh, in this position uh, padmini played knight into d7 i must say that uh, knight e8 was um, uh, a good move in this position right was winning there is this threat of uh, rook f8 in the air so this was a good move but padmini played knight d7 which is also interesting and um, very interesting is in this position finally black could not control not capturing the queen you know it's like you're getting a queen how long can you resist you know capturing it so finally here black took rook into g6 knight d7 would have put up more resistance in this position but 
Black, as I said, could not hold it any further, captured the queen. Padmi took back h to g6 check, king g7 was played. Uh, another interesting variation is if king g8, rook f8 check, king g7, rook f7 check, king into g6, knight e5 check, king g5, and now there is a cool move, bishop e2 with rook h5, an unavoidable mate threat. So, in the game, after h to g6, black played king g7, and I find it very interesting that how the black king was dragged from h8 all the way to the other side of the board. It's very nice to get, to be able to finish your opponent does. So in the game, rook h7 was played, king g6, knight f8 check, king g5, rook g7 check, king h5, bishop e2 check, king h4, g3, king h3, and bishop f1 mate. It's so nice to get a chance to mate your opponent by dragging the king from h8 to h1, h3. In this game, Padmini is white and black is Saveta ch. This was played in the Indian National Women B Championship in the year 2008. Now this position I chose as a short and sweet example for all of us to solve. This is my masala chai moment. If you are white in this position, what do you do? It's short and sweet. Did you find the move? Padmini played the final move of the game queen c2 and opponent resigned those of you who found uh, rook a8 rook b8 and queen c2 this is also winning but of course padmini's queen c2 is very very forcing and after queen c2 the point is that again here it's the same concept that we saw in my 28th episode the game of anish giri and there I use the theme of back rank mate and again here it's the same thing. The point is if black captures the queen, black, white is not capturing back here but playing rook a8 and there is this back rank problem black has. And after queen c2, as you see the queen of black is attacked, the rook is attacked on f5 and here if queen d7, white has the move, queen into f5, queen into f5, rook a8. There's a back rank weakness and this is very, very important. You have to take care of your back rank. In the year 2017, Padmini played the Women World Chess Championship. It's a knockout tournament and Padmini did exceedingly well there. So I decided to show one finish from the tournament and that game was very important for Padmini because it helped her enter the second round by knocking out her very strong opponent. Danielian. So in this game, Padmini is white and black is Danielian Elena of Armenia, a very strong player herself. And this is a position reached after 28th move of black. It's white to play, Padmini is white. What was the last move in the game which sealed the victory for Padmini not only in the game but in this match with Danielian? Padmini finished the game in style with the move rook f6. Her opponent resigned here because the queen is under attack and if the queen moves white is threatening rook into h6, bishop into h6, queen into h6 with a mate. I mean we can see it here. So suppose this takes, takes, takes is a mate and if the rook is captured with the bishop there is queen at six with a checkmate. Beautiful finish. Padmini has developed a very important quality in chess. In completely equal positions or even in slightly worse positions, she keeps 
fighting hard. She keeps fighting back. And all she tries to do is she tries to stay in the game. And this is very, very important. We must try to stay in the game for a little bit longer. We must try to make things difficult for our opponents, give them chances to push harder, to go wrong. So I have seen her playing so many equal positions, winning so many equal endgames. And even in worse positions, she squeezes out half a point full point. Let's see a few examples. So this is a game in which Padmini is white and Saptarshi Roy Choudhury is black. Now Saptarshi is a good friend. He's a very strong player, now a grandmaster. And this was played in the year 2007 in the Parshunath Commonwealth Championship. And here, as we see, white is a pawn down. So Padmini is a pawn down here and she has been defending this position for quite some time. And Saptarshi, as he's a pawn up, he's trying to win in this position for quite some time. So all Padmini was doing is trying to stay longer in the game. And this is black to play and black blundered in this position. As I always keep telling, even strong players blunder, they do go wrong. I mean, there's nobody who's immune to, you know, mistakes. We all make mistakes. And here... Uh, in the heat of the battle, <coughs> Saptarshi played the blunder, king d5, he blundered into a mate. <coughs> and he, <coughs> sorry. And here, Padmini played queen b3, he had to resign because after king d4, there's a mate with bishop e3. So we have to defend, we have to stay in the game in difficult positions. This position was reached in a game in Gibraltar. Padmini is white. Grandmaster Al Said Muhammad, a very strong player, is black. I was Padmini's roommate in this tournament and uh, I know this game since that time. It's very interesting that Padmini blundered a piece in the opening, but then she realized that all she could do in the game was to fight back was to go all out, was to attack. And it's not easy, you know, when you blunder a piece against a grandmaster and you still keep on fighting. She did not give up. This is very, very important. So this is a very good example. Another good example for us to understand that when things are not going our way, we still have to fight back. So, you know, from an early opening piece loss to this is a 33rd move, she has been in a difficult position and uh, in the diagram position it is black to play and black is completely winning black has an excellent position padmini tried her best to put opponent's king in some pressure now suppose this is a position from your game and you are black of course i do understand that you have a lot of moves which you can play now suppose i give you two choices so suppose you have two moves to consider Two moves come to your mind and one move is rook d8 one move is rook e8 you need to make a decision both the moves look good which one would you choose in this position any other move and the move rook d8 are correct, but the grandmaster went for rook e8, but this happens to be a blunder. Can you find the win for white from here? finished off the game rook into f7 rook into f7 queen h6 and we see that after king g8 there's a mate on g7 as the rook is pinned an excellent example of fighting back in a very very difficult position even again grandmasters 
if you put up resistance, if you don't give up when things are not going your way, you might get good result. That's something to learn from Padmini. Friends, I'm trying to show different elements required in the game of chess to become a strong player and I'm using Padmini's games as an example. Now these are not necessarily the best games of Padmini. These are the moments from her games which I liked. Of course she has played many great games and you know uh, it has had many different elements but I have chosen what I want to show to my subscribers. So this is a game played in the year 2007 Padmini is white, Harika is black, uh, we all know Harika is a grandmaster, very strong player, another good friend and uh, here in this position uh, black has just played f5 and the bishop on g4 is under attack and Padmini needs to make a decision regarding the bishop. A normal move in this position would be to play bishop f3. But didn't I tell you that originally Padmini is a very, very attacking player. So Padmini had something different in mind. May not be objectively the best, but her idea was very interesting. She played the move bishop into f5, sacrificing her bishop. Harika took back g into f5 and she played e5. Black played f4 and we see that the rook on e3 is under attack. Very interesting position. What to do here? What to do about the rook? You may pause if you want to. I'll go ahead and show uh, what Padmini did. I really like the next move in the game. So Padmini played a very good attacking move and that is king h1. I mean it's so nice, right, that king h1 is an attacking move. She did not defend her e3 rook, but very important is she wants to play rook g1 check. The king is the most important piece in the game of chess and we have to checkmate the opponent's king, right? So here white has dangerous ideas after rook g1, but in chess very important is prophylaxis. So the black player has to, you know, Harika in this case, has to spot White's ideas and has to stop it. And you know what? In chess, this is very, very important. It sounds very easy. How can it be a big deal, you know? You just have to spot opponent's ideas, stop it. How can this be, you know, the most important factor to become a strong player? But yes, it's easier said than done. It's not easy. And here we see that, uh, I mean, you know, if you want, you can, you can pause here. You can think that if you're black here, what will you do? What will be your move? This is not like a black to play and win position. It's a position where you have to understand your opponent's ideas. It's, you know, right now, if you look at this, what is just threatening a mate, a mate and two, yes. So you have to stop that. Harika did stop that by playing rook f8. So she realized that queen f6 would be a threat after rook g1 and she had to control the f6 square. But this was not enough. The f6 square was just not enough. There's more to the game, more to the position. So here, the move rook f8 left another way for white to win the game. I'll first show the win and then we'll come back to the position. So Padmini played rook g1 check, king h8 and the winning move here, queen e7 and the point is that queen g7 checkmate cannot be stopped. This is the whole point. Harika played knight e6 and Padmini took back d into e6. It's very important to note here that the black queen, the black queen on b2 is completely cut off from this king by this pawn on e5. So the queen is not able to defend the king and queen g7 is coming. For example, if rook g8 here, there is queen f6, rook g7, queen g7 with a checkmate. 
so coming back to the position after king h1 that is why i always stress on the fact that prophylaxis in chess understanding what opponent wants to do and to stop it the right way is very important in chess to become a strong player and here there were two ways but none of them are easy the two ways black can stop the checkmate and both the uh, you know moves lead to kind of an equal position so for example black can play knight into d5 black is up a piece in this position black can give it back queen into d5 king h8 queen d6 idea queen f6 check rook g8 queen f6 rook g7 i mean i'm just showing you a sample variation there can be deviations rook g1 rook c g8 i just come back this could be one way to equalize in this position and the other way for black to play is knight e6 blocking the queen's path to f6 so here black has to give up the material black has extra d into e6 f into e3 e7 now white is down a rook but the king on g8 is very badly exposed it has no pieces near it and after e into f2 stopping rook g1 there is queen e6 king h8 queen f6 with a draw so harika had to find this way to save the game but as i said it's easier said than done it's not easy in the heat of the battle to find the right moves and under pressure everybody can go wrong so i really liked the the move king h1 in this in this you know in this particular position a very nice attacking move by padmini i hope you all enjoyed the positions from the games of padmini let's wish our indian stars padmini lalit babu and murli kartikeyan a very happy birthday hope you all enjoyed this episode bye bye see you